floor, the engineers use clever physics to drive them into the ground. This is what's called a spud can or a suction anchor. It's used to secure oil rigs like the Pedido to the ocean floor, but obviously at about 50 times the size. If I turn on this vacuum pump, you can see it creates a suction. So I do the same in the water. If I place it on the ocean bed, which this represents, initially it only goes into its depth under its own weight, so it's hardly getting into the ocean floor at all. But as I pump out the air in the water, it draws itself down into the ocean bed, creating a firm anchorage. There it's now secure, and obviously at about 20 feet diameter, a group of those will provide an extremely firm anchorage, which would be almost impossible to pull out. Suction anchors are the perfect solution for anchoring deep water platforms like Perdido. But activating a suction pump at the bone-crushing depths below the rig is impossible for human divers. So the engineers use robotic divers, called ROVs, to do the job. An operator four kilometers away maneuvers the ROV towards the suction anchor and attaches a pump. This removes the water and creates a vacuum that sucks the anchors down and locks Perdido's foundations into the seabed. Although the Gulf of Mexico is plagued by hurricanes, there is a more insidious danger for Perdido lurking under the surface. Here in the Gulf, we have to be able to survive what we call a loop current, which is a, a big circular current in the Gulf of Mexico, where we get very high currents on the order of five or six feet per second. And what that causes is it causes uh, the spar, in particular, but any cylinder, to vibrate in the current. On the scale of Perdido, this phenomenon could cause havoc. Vortices forming in fast currents could make the rig sway nearly 100 meters sideways and damage it. But Perdido uses a simple device to deal with the currents. A thin strip of steel spiraling down its side called a strake. Without it, the swaying motion of the rig would pull on the drill pipe. This could rupture the pipe and cause a disastrous oil spill. The strake also stops the crew from getting seasick. Because Perdido is a floating rig, the engineers don't need deep sea divers to put it together. But today, they are facing the mother of all assembly jobs. They are about to lift the 9,000-ton platform deck, called the top sides, onto its base. The crane barge doing the deck lift is the most powerful of its kind in the world. It has lifted many top sides in the Gulf, but none as big and heavy as the Perdido deck. The engineers are confident that the barge is up to the task. But they can't be entirely sure. The worst case scenario is that we drop the topside. It's happened here in the Gulf of Mexico a number of years ago. There was a heavy lift. Uh, top sides have been built after several years of construction. We picked it up and, uh, and it was dropped to the seafloor. With a price tag of several billion dollars, dropping the top sides is not an option. So everything is checked and checked again. And then once more for good measure. Then the teams hold their breath as the operation begins. 
crane lifts the top sides off its barge. Now it has to place the deck precisely onto the docking points on the platform base. After 10 hours, the top sides is finally in place. One of the biggest lifts in history, completed without a hitch. Once the bottom half is in the upright position, it isn't very stable. As soon as the deck is added, the rig gets very top heavy and could easily flip. The solution is 13,000 tons of pulverized iron ore. This is pumped into a tank at the bottom of the spa, which gives Perdido an extremely low center of gravity, so it becomes impossible to flip. When we put that weight in the bottom of the spar, it's inherently stable. It's not going to flip over or get out of alignment. Other floating structures, uh, weight and stability is a real issue. So when you put weight on one side of the platform, you got to put ballast on the other side of the platform to make sure it doesn't tip over. But we don't have that problem on a spar. July the 6th, 1988. Piper Alpha, the largest oil platform in the North Sea is rocked by a series of explosions. The platform is destroyed and tons of oil spill into the sea. From a crew of 226, only 59 survive. The others perish in the blaze. Piper Alpha is a grim eye-opener for the oil industry. The biggest danger to a steel structure is fire because the heat weakens the steel. So I've got these two drinks cans. They're gonna be my steel columns. One of them is painted in regular paint, the sort of thing you'd find at home. But the other one has special intumescent paint on. So let's see how it works. I'm going to load the columns as if they were part of an oil rig. And then I'm going to set fire to them. The intumescent paint reacts violently to the heat. It puffs up and begins to char. But this is the perfect recipe for fire protection. The unprotected steel just can't take the heat. So this column's going to go... And this column is being protected from the fire by the formation of charcoal. It has a mineral inside that causes the expansion. And the insulating layer prevents heat being conducted to the steel and weakening it. So this looks like it'll go for a long time. It's certainly long enough for people to escape. It might give you half an hour of fire protection. Piper Alpha lay 180 kilometers offshore. Perdido is nearly twice as far from the coast. The men are over two hours flight time from rescue. So delaying the destructive effects of a fire on the rig is crucial. Engineers have applied a fireproof coating to all the critical parts of the steel structure. This guarantees they will survive the heat for longer. And to protect the workers from explosions, engineers have fitted 18 steel panels to separate the production side from the living quarters. In the event of a blast, these panels deform and 
would soak up the energy of the shock wave without rupturing. By remaining intact, this blast wall shields the living quarters from fire. The oil industry has learned its lesson from the Piper Alpha disaster. Pedido uses state-of-the-art technology to make sure its workers don't risk their lives in pursuit of the black gold. Perdido reaches deeper into the ocean than any oil rig before it, and it uses technology to try and reduce the environmental impact that oil rigs have had in the past. Standing on the shoulders of historic engineering giants, this really is the ultimate oil rig. Until someone builds an even deeper one.